Wouldn't it be great if you could have a screen showing you how your solar and battery installation was performing laid out exactly as you want? And wouldn't it be great if you could program your battery to automatically charge and discharge to make the most of the smart tariff you're on? There's a technology available that can do all this called Home Assistant, and it can even control many other aspects of your home. I didn't know too much about it, so it was time to speak to the geek, and here's what he said. Thanks, Oliver, for agreeing to come on the channel. It's great to have you here. Yeah, good to see you again. Yep. Now, on your own channel, Speak to the Geek, you've covered a, the topic of Home Assistant uh, in a number of videos. Can you explain to viewers what exactly Home Assistant is? Yeah, sure. So it's like a home automation software that's open source. So it's uh, contributed to by loads of different people all over the world. And it basically connects lots of different smart devices together from all sorts of different brands and it lets you control and monitor them from a single place. Uh, so I use it to control most of my home now. So um, things like my lights, my security system, my heating and even my dishwasher uh, is now controlled by it. Uh, it's best run on dedicated hardware, so like um, a 24-7 server. Uh, something that you leave on all the time in your home um, uh, because basically if it's not turned on then your automations won't be running. Uh, so I use a Raspberry Pi because it's really low power. Um, they're quite easy to get hold of. They, they sell them in loads of different places but probably the most um, important reason why I use a Raspberry Pi is because it's really well supported. There's uh, loads of people out there who've got the exact same setup. I mean that sounds really great Oliver. And I was particularly interested in the home solar related applications of Home Assistant in the videos that you've made. I mean, how would someone benefit from Home Assistant, you know, someone with a, a solar and battery installation? Yes, yeah, so at a basic level, they're going to get consolidated monitoring because I mean, most people have got hardware from multiple manufacturers. So you might have got an EV charger from My Energy. You might have got a, um, a solar edge inverter for your um, solar panels, a give energy battery, um, a, a hot water system or something. Uh, and they're all got their own apps. They've all got their own smart capabilities. But if you put them into Home Assistant, you can see them all in one place. You can control them all in one place. Uh, and one of my favorite features of, um, of Home Assistant uh, that that sort of gives you is something called power flow cards. Uh, so you can get a real good visualization on uh, your home assistant dashboard of your home, your battery, uh, your solar panels, and you can see the power flying between all of those, um, those different items. You can also get things like uh, solar forecast automation, um, which, is, which can save you quite a bit of money actually. It checks the weather forecast and the solar forecast for the next day and you can use it to adjust the percentage that you charge your battery to the night before um, to avoid drawing too much from the grid because you can charge it up from solar the next day. So that can save you a bit of money. I think I was saving, I did that over the summer in one of my videos and I think I was saving about seven pounds a month or something like that on average. So. It's real money, so uh, but you can also do things like use automations to turn on a smart plug when there's excess solar detected. And I'm using it to balance two different give energy inverters that aren't supposed to work together, but they all sort of are working together now. I mean, wow, that sounds like a really capable technology. Um, now, I'm quite technical and, and I've written a lot of software in my time, you know, but when I started to look at Home Assistant, it looked a little bit daunting for me. And, and so I can imagine for the average person, you know, when they come across the technology, I mean, it looks really scary. I mean, what what's the least scary route that someone could take to get into the technology so that they can get the benefits that you described? Well, I think it's important to start by saying it's not a plug and play solution and you're going to need to spend a lot of time learning it and getting used to it. Um, but getting started with the basics is quite easy. Um, there's loads of ways to install it, but the easiest uh, is like I have uh, just on a Raspberry Pi. So you just use an SSD, which is like a, a laptop hard drive um, memory chip type of thing. Um, and I've got a video on that just to plug my channel a little bit there um, on how to get it up and running and installed on a Raspberry Pi using an SSD. Um, but once you have got it up and running, you've got to kind of pick a single goal, one something easy to start with. 
So just try and automate a light bulb or something. Um, and that'll just get you used to how Home Assistant works, um, how to create automations, uh, all the terminology that comes with Home Assistant. Because it's, it's kind of got its own language, really. Um, and then you can work your way up to more difficult tasks. Um, so things like integrations for solar and batteries, they're not normally built in. Um, so you have to do a lot of searching around the internet for other people with similar systems who've also used it with Home Assistant. Um, and there's a lot available in something called Hacks, uh, which is like a third party app store. Um, again, another video on my channel uh, showing you how to install that. Um, but again, that's a bit more advanced. So it's quite a steep learning curve, uh, but it's capable of doing pretty much anything if you're willing to learn and put the time in. I mean, you've done quite a few videos on Home Assistant, so I can imagine whatever someone wants to do, uh, whatever they want to try with it, whatever uh, systems they want to connect, you've probably got a video on that. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully I've got a video on that, yeah. So, uh, I mean, if I haven't, then people can put something in the comments and I'll see if I can have a go at one. Brilliant. Uh, now, I've heard of a couple of products. Uh, I don't know if they're made by Home Assistant or not. They're, they're called Home Assistant Green and Home Assistant Yellow. Can you say a little bit about what those products are? Yeah, so the, the company behind Home Assistant called Nabu Casa, they, they actually have built some dedicated hardware um, items that you can buy. Um, one's called yellow, one's called green. I think they used to have a blue as well, but they've discontinued that now. Um, but the yellow is effectively a Raspberry Pi inside. It's got something called a CM4, which is its compute module four, I think it's called, which is like a Raspberry Pi four, but without all the interfaces on. And then that sticks onto some custom hardware they've built, which has got um, a slot for extra storage. It's got all your network interfaces, USB ports, that sort of thing. And critically, it's got things like um, Zigbee radios and thread radio built in. Um, so as you can use it for like an all in one home automation system. So basically you buy it, um, plug it in and it all works. Um, that can be quite expensive actually, it's a good couple of hundred quid. Um, I think I know someone who's bought one recently, it cost them about £250 all in to get imported to the UK from China. Um, so I think that's why they've got the green which is about £100, £150 and that's essentially a really cut down version comes with Home Assistant installed. It doesn't have all the extra radios on. Um, it doesn't use a Raspberry Pi processor in it. It's got its own custom, uh, I think it's a quad-core ARM processor um, built into it. Uh, but then the idea is that you can plug in USB adapters if you want the radios and things in the future. Um, but I mean, I still use a Raspberry Pi because it's really easy to replace if it breaks. Um, there's loads of places who sell replacements with really quick delivery in case I need to get one in a hurry. Um, but that requires self-assembly. So I can understand if self-assembly and building your own is not for everyone, which I guess is where the yellow and the, um, the green have their niche. All right, okay, that makes sense to me. Thanks for that. Well, one thing I would like to do is have this kind of dashboard that you spoke about earlier. I would love to have something on the wall or something that I could look at, you know, just glance at, you know, any time during the day to see what's happening with my system. Um, one thing I'm wondering about, though, is, you know, how reliable could I expect that to be? Um, because ideally, I just wanted to set it up and then it would just work for years. I mean, could you say a little bit about the reliability of Home Assistant? So yeah, I mentioned the PowerFlow cards before and I really like those because they make a great sort of showpiece on a dashboard and they'd look great on a, on a wall because you've got your little bubbles um, that show different entities and you can see the power flying between all of the devices. And you could also uh, create gauges which uh, could show you like the state of charge of your battery or um, they can show power or energy use today, that sort of thing. They all look quite um, interesting and engaging on a dashboard. Um, but the problem is they do need feeding and watering quite a bit because you've got to remember you're using code created by other people and it's all thrown together, not necessarily tested before it's released and it can be unpredictable. Um, so you have to keep Home Assistant up to date as well um, to make sure it's patched against security vulnerabilities that are found. Um, and every time you update it, it will introduce new features and changes which can break the integrations that you've got. So it can be a bit of cat and mouse at times when um, 
you, you, you can get something up and working, it looks brilliant, um, you update it and all of a sudden it stops working until the developer of that component then catches up and fixes the bugs that have been introduced. So it can be frustrating, when it works it's brilliant, but you've just got to remember every time you update it, keep an eye on it, make sure it's working. All right, I get it then. So it's not completely a fire and forget solution. It is something that you will have to spend a little bit of time tending to it just to make sure that it keeps working. So more of a, more of a hobby uh, in that respect. Uh, but nevertheless, I guess you're learning all the time because you, you learn more about how the technology is working every time you have to, to look at it to maybe fix something that's broken. Okay, um, well, Oliver, thanks for that introduction to Home Assistant. That was pretty comprehensive and I know that you've got a whole suite of videos to support that and we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But maybe before we do, let's talk about the future of Home Assistant. I mean, where do you see it going? And, and maybe as part of that, are there any features that you would love to see in Home Assistant that don't exist already? Oh, that's a difficult one to answer actually, because uh, only a few years ago it was purely just light bulbs and smart switches in my house, uh, but now it's controlling almost everything. Um, so I think we're going to see more advances in things like machine learning because at the moment there's people experimenting with cloud control of um, sort of machine learning um, techniques uh, but there's no sign of it being used in Home Assistant yet but I think it would be great if it could learn your energy habits and then create automations itself based on that. I'm not sure whether I'd fully trust it but um, yeah, it would be great to see that capability evolve. I know at the moment Home Assistant is in what they're calling the year of the voice. So they're trying to replicate a full um, voice controlled. I'm not going to say the word that you'd <laughs> use on an Echo Dot, for example, or a, uh, a, a certain big brand assistant. And um, yeah, they're trying to replicate that sort of functionality in Home Assistant. Um, but perhaps in the new year, they might come up with a new year of the machine learning or something like that. It would be good to see that come in. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Home Assistant evolves over the years, especially with the integration of AI that you spoke about then. Well, one final question then. Um, for people who are you know, wanting to get started with Home Assistant, you've made a lot of videos on that, on all different aspects of, of the technology. What would be a good first video uh, for a viewer to start watching in order to start using the technology? So a good first one, if they're going to go down the route of using a Raspberry Pi, then I've got a video that's all about installing Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi using an SSD, not a micro SD card, because Home Assistant can wear out an SD card quite quickly. So it's best to use an SSD because of all the rights to the um, rights to the storage. Um, and it's quite quite an easy process. You just get a Raspberry Pi, you get a USB caddy with your um, drive in and you plug it in and uh, away you go pretty much and uh, if you've got a give energy system though I've got several videos of that on my channel covering things like integrating it with PowerFlow cards actually using something called give TCP which lets you connect it to home assistant so that's uh, a good place to start if you've got a give energy system great and I think I'll have a look at that video myself um, so Oliver, just to say thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come onto the channel and give everyone a really good introduction to Home Assistant. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on here. And to my viewers, if you haven't already discovered Speak to the Geeks channel, I thoroughly recommend that you check it out. There are hundreds of videos there on all sorts of different topics, not just Home Assistant, and I'll put a link in the description.